Okay, we're back down in the shop today, and on the previous video, I showed basically how to get started with the control. On this video, I'm going to go over more into uh, how to do MDI operations, just to test and see if your machine's working. Um, I don't use it a whole lot. I know a lot of folks that probably do more conversational type things or direct programming on the machine may use this all the time. Uh, I don't use it all the time. Mainly, I'm going from Fusion to the DNC straight into the control. A big question that come up from one of the YouTube users was how do I start my spindle in, in MDI mode? Um, now I just wanted to show you, I've already typed in some entries and I'm going to show you how to get these in there real quick. And uh, But here if you notice, we've got some, um, a lot of our G codes are up here. Uh, currently I have uh, the last thing that was run was M03. And uh, we had an S setting of 500. Uh, so basically, M03 will start the spindle. So ideally, to start the spindle, we want to give it a speed of 500, and then we want to do a uh, an M and an M3 command to tell it to start turning the spindle. Um, in case you're wondering, I've got the camera focused on this so you can see, so I may be a little blurry, um, but that's on purpose. So, in order to do this, on the keyboard, what I would type, if I was starting from scratch, I've already zero home the machine, uh, I've got all three zero reference lights are on for all axes, the machine's ready to go, there's a tool in the spindle. Uh, what I would do to set this up is basically start with the uh, spindle command, which I'm going to do S500. So I type S500. Zero, 0, which shows up here, and I'm going to do an insert, and that's going to bring that up here as a command. I want to enter one more command in. I want to do, I want the spindle to start, so I'm going to enter M3, or M03. So we're, we've already uh, inserted that one. We're going to go M03, we're going to hit insert. As you see, it just added that up here, okay? We're done with this block. We're going to add an end of block. And we're going to insert it. Uh, so you should have a little semicolon. I believe that you have the semicolon up here um, on the screen. So we've got the semicolon there. Uh, this is ready to go now. So if we hit cycle start, um, it's going to run this program. It's going to show you. This is more like what the variables were set to. Um, just as a reference. So we're going to hit cycle start. And as you can see over here, maybe, uh, the spindle just started. Okay, uh, you can stop the spindle or you can reset uh, what you just did by hitting reset generally. Um, so hopefully that goes over. The biggest trouble people have on the MDI screen is one, you've got to enter things in one at a time. It works just like manually programming the machine. Uh, you've got to enter a command do an insert, enter command, do an insert. Ensure that you do a, a end of block, which is a semicolon at the very end, uh, and then it's ready to go. Once you get that cycle started, it's gonna run whatever you've got up here uh, in the code. Okay, just real quick as another example, we're on our MDI screen, we just did this spindle stuff. I'm gonna show you how to do a tool change. Now the difference between a tool change and pallet change is the machine has to be in a particular position for it to execute. Right now, I'm not in that position. If I look down and I look at my ATC, uh, the light's not on, it's not in the ATC position. Mm. So if I go over, I've got an example program here that actually does this. It's going to put it in a position uh, that I'm going to run. I do that by putting in auto mode. Um, and I'm going to hit cycle start and it's going to basically do a tool change. Two tool changes actually. Okay, so now that we've done the tool change, I'm going to go back into MDI mode, and I'm going to give it a tool and tell it to change. Now that we're in the position, my light on my ATC is green. If you had a pallet changer and you're trying to execute a pallet change command, it needs to be in the correct position for that to happen. Um, and that'll vary between machines. So if we look here, you can see it's it's 
kept that in the register for tool. So right now we have two, tool two, hard, really hard to say, in the uh, machine. So we're gonna tell it to change to tool three. Um, so we're gonna do tool three, insert, and we're gonna do an M6, which is gonna cause the tool change to occur. Okay, don't forget you're in the block. We'll insert that in the block. And now when we hit cycle start, it's gonna do a tool change. It's in the right position, it's ready to do a tool change. I don't remember if that was the tool that I actually changed in, so I, we're gonna do it one more time just to make sure we got a handle on it. So tool six, uh, M6, insert. Don't forget you're in the block. Insert it. Always get in the habit of looking up here at this screen and making sure it looks right. It should have a, a semicolon at the end. Okay, so we've got it in there now. So in theory, we should be the tool six, and we're going to execute an M6 command. Okay, so now if we look here on this screen, we're now at tool six. Um, pretty much everything works that way, especially more advanced things. Um, one time that I did use uh, MDI was to really get a good handle on uh, rigid tapping. With this machine, it does have the rigid tapping option. And it was kind of handy to kind of step into a program and actually practice the rigid tapping thing uh, without a tap holder in it, just to see what it was actually going to do to make sure I had uh, with rigid tapping. Your feed down needs to match your spindle rotations. So you can imagine how precise that's got to be, uh, especially I was not using a cutting tool, I was using form tapping, so that was actually forming the threads as it went down uh, through just friction and pressure. Anyway, I hope this helps some folks out, and uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment on any of these videos. I'll try to link a card to the last uh, couple that were related. Okay, a lot of times when you're troubleshooting, trying to get started, um, it's a lot easier to use a text editor and a computer. Um, if you're directly connected, that's even easier. In my case, I have a DNC mounted on the side of my machine. It has a USB key. And what I'll do, I'll basically do like a little test program, or maybe a couple of test programs. And I'll actually load them from the DNC onto the controller. Rather than actually drip feeding, I'm actually pulling that data into the controller. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick because that may help you uh, really quickly. Just do a couple of test scripts to try out uh, without a lot of data entry on the uh, control itself. So right now I've got the DNC set up. I'm just gonna pull it off here. Um, so right now we're ready to send 10, 10, 1, uh, 10 1, or sorry, 10 5 0, um, which is a MUX bottom. It's a really big program. It's probably not gonna fit. I'll show you on the screen here. Um, these Fanux don't have a lot of memory and I've got, you wanna keep it narrowed down to like really small files. Uh, so this is ready. I showed that in the last video, how to set this DNC up to be able to send. But the thing you're looking for is this little ready indicator here tells you it's ready. So we're going to pop that on. Everything's connected. Uh, I'm just going to go over this really quick. Uh, so this is uh, how much we've used, how much we have free. We don't have a lot free. Uh, this will probably not fit, so it's probably going to fail. Uh, and I'll probably stop it in the middle so it doesn't fill up. And I'll show you how to delete a program as well right off the control. Uh, so everything's ready to go. So we're in edit mode right now. Um, we're actually going to hit the program. We're going to go to I.O., uh, which brings us to this screen. And to basically send the serial signal to this DNC that I want to pull code off. And to watch here real carefully, you'll see what happens. So as soon as I hit input, it is basically downloading that program. If we look here, hopefully I won't disconnect it. You can see it's sending really slow. It's sending the data across. Okay, we're going to stop that a little prematurely. So this is that code or as much of the code that it's downloaded, um, which is not complete. Uh, so let's say that we're doing tests and we want to go into this, do a little testing, and then remove it off the control. Removing off the control is really easy once you do it the first time but it, it took me a little while to figure this out uh, so what we want to do is enter that program name 
which is O one zero five zero. So we're gonna do O one zero five zero. We've got it up here on the screen. Okay? We're gonna hit delete. Program is gone. It's that easy. Um, okay, just a real quick tip. In case you run into it, you want to load a program that's already on the control. The way you do that is you can go, you can basically, while in program mode or edit mode, you can hit program and flip between the actual program and basically your library list. Um, let's say that we want to load uh, 01030. You type in 01030. Stop. We have down cursor. It loads that program. Uh, the way you run it is you basically click it over to auto. And we're going to do a Z axis cancel. And get out of the way here so you can kind of see the machine what's going to happen. And we're going to hit socket start. It's probably going to hit a tra over travel alarm because of the work offset. Okay, we over traveled on Z. That's how you start a program. If at any point, there's two ways of stopping this spindle if you run into like some kind of alarm. The sure way is to hit the emergency shutoff. The less uh, dramatic way is just hit the reset and that'll stop your spindle. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Be sure to like and subscribe.